Hello and welcome back to part two of our little oil barrel uh, game asset creation tutorial series. Uh, this will be the last part. Unlike our previous tutorials that we've done, uh, this one I'm not going to use ZBrush, so I just went straight from 3D Studio Max into Substance Painter, which we are going to look at now. So let's just fly straight into it. Uh, we'll go File, we will go to New Project. And I want to load in my little FBX. Let me see, where did I save this to now? Do, do, do. Save that in a different place from last time. Bear with me one second. Pan experiments. Oil bar, there we are. So just a little low poly FBX. Uh, that's going to be our file. We'll keep the template as is. Uh, we'll set a resolution up to 2048. And then we will just hit OK. That will load up. So there we are. There is our barrel. Yeah, we look around. That's looking not too bad there. Uh, you can see our little UV map here. Um, this, as I said before in the last video, I didn't spend any time optimizing this at all. I just done a flat and unwrap just so we could wrap up that video. What I might actually do once this one is finished and once we have the project completed, I might actually go back and do a little appendix video where I'll just go back and tidy this UV up a bit and show you what it would look like to, to tidy this UV up a bit more properly. Um, but it'll not actually affect really much in our, our uh, final product now at the minute. Um, other wee thing, made sure to change the material that we were using. Uh, we just set a, a plain material on there, it's called My Oil Drum Material in the last video, and you can see there that carries over into the texture set list. And if we had had multiple objects in this mesh with multiple materials on them, they would each have had um, a corresponding texture set to each material. So maybe in later tutorials when we're doing more complex objects, we'll see that in action. Uh, okay, what do we want to do here? We want to paint this little... Um, oil barrel. Now we don't have a high definition mesh. As I said, we didn't go into uh, ZBrush to make any high definition mesh and we didn't make a high definition one in 3ds Max either. But we will just go ahead and back out our texture sets as well. So we want to go to this um, little window called texture set settings. We'll come down here, a little button called back mesh maps. Uh, output size, we'll just leave them low at 1024. Uh, because we don't have a high poly mesh, what we can do is just click this little button that says use low poly mesh as high poly mesh. And effectively what it's doing, it's just saying use this same mesh again, apply it on top of itself. It'll not make any difference, um, but just so that Substance Painter can do its thing and generate its ambient occlusion, etc, etc. We will click that and let it load up. And that gets all our remaps nice and ready to go. You can see it's filled them in here. I won't actually create anything for us on normal map. will just be completely blank because we've no dirt or scratches or anything in there. Uh, ambient occlusion will get a wee bit of stuff on. So you see a wee bit of ambient occlusion there. <laughs> I've just noticed a little mistake here. My little, um, my little cap's actually just floating a little bit above, but it's no problem. It'll not really matter. But you can see we've got a wee bit of ambient occlusion shadows around there anyway. Okay, so that's all we really need to do. We're good to go. Um, good practice we will save our project before we do anything else so file save just navigate where you want to go so where have i saved this my artwork random and 3d oil barrel there we go we'll call this oil barrel that'll be lovely just make sure 10 minute save rule always be saving so what i want to do right we want to color this oil barrel. What I'll maybe do is I'll make a nice pristine one um, and we can save that out and then we can make a uh, or I'll show you some ways we can just uh, weather it down a bit and make it look a bit battered and beaten. So first thing I want to do is I want to start with the base material. I want to make the, the steel of the drum itself. It's just the material here. I'm going to type in steel and we've got steel rough. That'll do for now. I'm just going to drag that on there. And that creates this um, steel material underneath. 
Uh, it's not looking too bad there. But most oil barrels that we see will actually have a paint layer on them. So what we're going to do is, uh, oh, I wonder actually, do we have a smart material that we can do this with? Let me see. Um, I don't think we have any specific paint materials, but we maybe have a, a plastic material. Glossy plastic or matte plastic. Uh, what should we do? I will go for a matte plastic. I will just drag that on there and that will put a layer on top. So this is actually on top of this one. And maybe I don't want this to be blue. So what I can do is in my properties over here, uh, selecting the plastic layer and then in my properties, if we scroll down, we can see that this material has a color, a roughness and a metallic property. And that is highlighted here. Um, those options are underneath. We can toggle these on and off. So say if I don't want any metallic at all, I can just toggle that off. And then it disappears from that wee list. Um, but I'll leave that back in there. And we want it to be metallic of zero. It's not metallic material at all. Uh, roughness. I might actually bring the roughness down a little bit and make this shinier. Make it slightly glossier. And my base color will go for maybe a yellow instead. Do what we'll do, we'll go for a yellow with a red stripe in the middle of it. And I'll show you how to make that now. So we've got our yellow barrel, I want a red stripe, and I'll probably make these wee caps red as well. So here's what we'll do. I'm going to, uh, quickest way to do this, I'm just going to right click and duplicate layers. So now I've got two copies of the yellow, but I'm going to change this yellow one. Uh, just up here in the properties, click on my base color slot. I'm going to change this to a red instead. Okay, so now we have a red barrel. Uh, but we only want the red to appear in this middle stripe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a black mask. And what the black mask does is it will hide all of that red from my entire, um, my entire layer. So I can no longer see it. But... Then I'm going to paint out parts of this mask so that we can see part of that red. So if I just take my brush and do that, you can see there's the red coming through. But I don't want to paint it in manual like that because that's going to take forever and it'll probably look pish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose my polygon fill tool. And you can see here that it shows up our polygon frames. So now I can literally just click on individual polys and it will show them. And my UV is not brilliantly unwrapped. Maybe I should have spent a bit more time unwrapping it, but it's not a big deal. There's not a lot of polys. We can just click these and fill them in. We do actually have a, an element fill here as well, but it's not cut properly, so it won't really be of much use. So we'll just uh, stick to filling individual polygons. Do, do, do. not take us too long because luckily there's not too many there we go yellow barrel with a red stripe and um, what else do we want to do we just want to color these little bits on top now these because they are separate objects their uvs will be completely separate what i can do is go to mesh fill here and now just click on that that'll fill the whole thing in same over here, mesh fill, fill the whole thing in. There we have our little oil barrel. And let me see, what else can we do? Okay, we'll start to add just a little bit of dirt and grime here onto this. Uh, it could be that we are somewhere and we're seeing a lot of brand new oil barrels, but more common is when we are playing a game where it's in a, a rundown industrial estate or it's on an old ship or something these barrels will have been here for years and they'll have a wee bit of uh dings and dents in them and a bit of rust so here is another thing we can do we are going to go back to our yellow plastic and we're going to add a mask to this one as well 
But I'm not going to add a black mask this time. A black mask gets rid of everything. Instead, I'm going to add a white mask. And the white mask maintains everything. So we'll not see any difference here now. But what we can do then, we can take our brush. And if I just start painting now, uh, oh, let me see, uh, change it from white all the way down to black. If I just change it, now we're starting to see that steel come through again. So what I want to do, I'll just undo that. I want to change my brush alpha. And I want to get something that looks a bit more like uh, scratches and scrapes. Uh, let me see, dirt, dirt spots, what do we have? This one's, uh, that's not bad, but I'll use it for something else later, maybe. What do we have now? Scratches here. Maybe these default brushes aren't the best, but this one, I'll use this, it's not too bad. And I'll hold control and then my mouse wheel, I can scroll up and down. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in some clicks here. What I'll do is I will randomize the rotation of this. Uh, angle, where's my angle jitter? There it is. So angle jitter will allow us, uh, every time we stamp this down, it will come down at a different angle. So I'll just turn that and all I want to do is click on some some wee scratches. This is not going to be perfect in any way because we're not using a, a custom alpha. Uh, but you can see there that by paint out bits of the um, yellow paint we're, we're being left with a steel underneath. So it kind of gives that effect of uh, the paint being chipped away and worn away and what I can maybe do is just turn down the intensity of this uh, hardness we want to leave that up stroke capacity there we are we'll bring that down a wee bit maybe and I'll just maybe a bit less harsh now you see there it's not actually coming over the red but we can fix that later on And in fact, to get rid of the red, I'll just hide that for a wee second. To get rid of the red, we'll go back to our fill tool here. And on the yellow layer, uh, we'll just fill in these, uh, not triangles, go to polygon mode. We'll fill these in completely just so that the... I wonder, can I click and drag? Yes, I can. Just click and drag and get rid of all that. There we go. So now we will turn our red layer back on. But working still on our mask for our oh, go back to the pencil tool. Working still on our mask for our yellow paint layer. I'm just going to fill some of these in randomly. I wonder do I have any other good alphas here? Let me just get a quick look. Uh, the dirt spots. Maybe that might look quite nice if we do that instead. Now, I think I said on the last video we were doing this. Um, really. You might want to look online or you might want to make your own brushes in Photoshop uh, to be more suited to whatever you're doing. I'm just using some of the stock brushes here to show you the effect you can get, which it'll look okay, but it'll not look exactly perfect. Um, but let's just see here. So we'll do that all the way around. It's a wee bit tedious. But I'm just taking those different couple of alphas. And maybe down on the bottom here, we can actually do it quite a bit. And especially around the rim where we know it's going to be, uh, say, sitting on the ground and scraping and stuff like that. Uh, let see, any other wee alphas here? We're just looking for ones that kind of look like natural kind of scrapes and scratches. Um, let me see. They're just some smudges and things. I just I don't want to use the same brush too much. I just want to have a wee bit of variation here. And of course, what you should also do is look back at your reference imagery and see how the patterns actually fall. 
um, just for the sake of quickness I'm not doing that I just want to get something made here very very quickly uh, and what I can also do then is go to my red layer we already have a mask on here so it's just the same thing I just paint in some of those scratches and spots and stuff so this makes us look quite edged and worn down but what I do want to focus on now that I've got a kind of a general rough um, area or roughness all over what I want to do is focus on these kind of ridges that are sticking out do you imagine this barrel rolling along the ground um, the points of contact with the ground are going to be these wee ridges so they are going to have more paint scraped than anything else so I'm just going to bring this way down really really small and just paint uh, on my yellow layer sorry make sure I'm painting over those just to really scrape that down and scrape across so what I might do is I might pause the video and paint in a bit of this and you guys do the same you just put uh, put your own bit of time into it and we'll see how we go on after maybe a couple of minutes of painting here okay guys welcome back um, I just spent a few minutes here painting in some uh, some what you call it some roughness and uh, scraping on the text and things like that um, but five ten minutes um, it's not perfect it's not ideal but what I did focus on was using the um, the little rims here in the red just scraping a lot of paint off those just to expose more of the metal underneath so expose more of that original steel that we put in there in the first place now, a couple more things I want to do now first we thing that can really make this pop a little bit. If I choose my yellow layer here, what I want to do is make this paint seem like it actually has a bit of thickness. Let me just get rid of that there. Um, I want to make this look like it has a little bit of thickness and that when the paint's being scraped away, we're seeing very thin paint, but then the metal underneath. And how I can do that is by going to my layer itself. Now, not the mask, but the layer itself. And where we have these properties, uh, color, height, roughness, metallic, etc. Uh, I currently don't have height enabled. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn height on. And even already, you'll see the difference this makes. But this gives us a little slider, and we can determine the height of that paint layer. So, in effect, what we're saying what thickness it is. And if, as I scroll up, you see it's going to give us this very, very thick effect. Now, this is obviously too much, but it'll kind of give you an idea of what's going on here. So I want to keep this very, 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 very low, like literally just the 0 0.01, not even, 0 0.05 might even be enough, but just the tiniest little amount, just to give this a wee bit of thickness, to make the paint look like it's sitting on top of the metal. And if I rotate my light around the scene, you can kind of see how it's given sort of wee highlights to the, the edges of the paint scraping there. Just add that wee bit of thickness, it's quite nice, but really subtlety is the key here. We don't really want to use very much at all. We'll do the same thing on the red layer. We will activate height, and again, just the tiniest, tiniest wee amount, 0.05. I might even go less than that. There we go. And you can see there on the top how strong that is on the yellow again. So what I might do is I might turn that down. Just the most subtle that you can get it is all you need. And it just adds that wee bit of something there. Okay, what else do you want to do? We might want to add a wee bit of text to this. So I'm going to create a new layer. I've already created a new layer while it was paused there. Um, well actually, I'll just show you. I'll show you exactly what. So we don't want to go for a fill layer this time. We want to go just for a regular layer. This one was a little stack of paper. I will just call this uh, text. Now, if I just select my paintbrush tool, how I add text to this is I can go to my alpha of my brush. And I've already done it here, but if you type in font into your search bar, 
it's going to give us about a dozen different fonts that we can use here. Now, they all say substance at the minute, but we can change this text later. Just be careful. There is a lot of other stuff that looks like a text system, but uh, if it says text on it, it means it's a fixed word. So this one will always say system, for example. This one will always say safety. But if it says font at the start of it, it is a it's a live font that we can actually change. So just make sure you know the difference between those two and pick the one you want. So here's a little font here that I want to use, this um, Black Ops one. And just underneath, when you pick that, you can choose what text you want to put in that. So I'm just going to go RB Oil uh, and finally be the, the oil merchant. I always knew I could be. And, and that was going to be there. Now nah, we'll leave that as that. And you see it's here, but I need to make it a bit bigger. So I'll go to size, make it fairly chunky. There we go. Uh, flow and opacity are up full. I need to make it a little bit bigger. Why not? There we go. And I will change my color, uh, base color. I'll go a yellow. I'll keep it kind of consistent all throughout. There we go. I'll just stamp that in there like so. And we can do the same thing. We can put the height up a little bit. In fact, no, I can't. I need to do that to begin with. So let me just undo that. I'll put my height up a little bit to begin with. There we are. Or the oil. That's all I really want to do with that. The other thing I could do is I could choose a, a logo to go on here. So I'll change my alpha now. And I'll just get rid of all that. And I'll just pick a random alpha. Uh, let me see. What would the logo for Arby Oil be? Uh, th this will do, Grad. I'll just make it a little bit smaller. So control and mouse wheel just to change the size of that. And let me see. That'll do. Let me just put another one this side. And you can see we've got a wee bit of height there and the light reflecting off it. Uh, all I really want to do is, now I will add a white mask to that. And I will just scrape some of that away again, get one of my little um, splashy brushes, something like that. I'll do grand even. And just get rid of just a wee tiny bit of that. Again, this brush is hardly perfect but it's just to show you what we're doing here well, do. now what else do i want to add the last thing i think i want to add to this is just a wee bit of dirt and grime so i will go the best way to do this I could add a plain layer <clears throat> and add the dirt to it, or I could add a fill layer that is all dirt and mask it out. I think I'll do that. I think I prefer doing that. So a fill layer. Uh, we will go base color, give it a kind of a, a dark, dirty brown here. Yeah, that's not too bad. I'll give it a wee bit of height as well. I'll give it a wee bit of thickness to that dirt. Uh, roughness, we want the dirt to be quite rough. It'll not be shiny at all. And then what we'll do is we will add a black mask to hide everything. And then I will just, on my mask layer, I'll get an alpha. I saw a really good one here a while ago that I want to use. Where is it? Yes, here. This uh, drips top one. And if I just start clicking that in. Oh, no. Oh, let me see. Do we have... Angle jitter, yes, turn that angle jitter off. We want to make sure we're very precise where we're going here. Angle jitter, we see in there, and then we're getting a wee bit of dirt. It's not quite what I want, so we'll go stroke opacity 100. There we go. And yeah, it's not 100% ideal, it's not lining up completely. And it's very dark so what I'm going to do is turn the opacity of this layer down a little mm, it's not great it's maybe a bit maybe trying to 
automate the process a bit too much. Uh, hmm, uh. Yeah, don't like it. But I've started, so I will finish. I'll just change that to 360. Make sure you're perfect flat. As long as we have something here. I need to clean this up a little bit, but it'll do for now. Just adds a little bit of dirt, a little bit of grime there. Um, but I don't want to rely on that too much. It's not as nice as I thought, so maybe, maybe we'll just have to kind of patchwork this in a wee bit. But we can go up the top here. We can add in a little smudge of dirt over the over near the uh, cap where we'll be pouring the oil out. Just passing it 100 there. Maybe paint that in twice, get a bit thicker. Um, and yeah, same thing again. We're just taking a few minutes, uh, going with different alpha brushes, and just adding a little bit of dirt and grime to it here. Uh, there's a good splash brush. I always like the splash brush. A bit overused, but sure, why not? Stick in there. And we change our rotation a wee bit on this, change the angle. Splat. Uh, where else do we have? We've a couple of other wee splash. Drips and splashes. Splat, you a couple of those in there. Make sure it's nice and thick, not transparent, really. Now, I may want to just turn the height down a little bit on this, just so it's not really sticking out. Can look a bit thick there again. Salt is the key, and uh, just add a few wee drips and splashes. Not spend too much time on it just because I know that it is uh, time's dragging on a bit in the video. You got 27 minutes. Um, okay, do you know what? We could sit and paint this all day, but we'll maybe leave it there for the video. Um, and in your own time, continue to work it up, continue to uh, add more detail, be a bit more fine with it than I have been. Uh, but there we are. That is our oil barrel. All we really need to do now, uh, once again, file and save, 10 minute save rule, and we will go to file, export textures, and we've got our texture sets there, we can see what all we're getting, we're getting our base color, our roughness, metallic, normal, height, emissive, uh, we could change this, if we know we're going to the Unreal Engine, we could change this to Unreal Engine 4, and it'll give us similar, but just more optimized for the Unreal Engine. And then we just click the export button. Uh, oh, we can also save up here where we actually want to save these two. I should probably do that. Um, but I won't just do that right now. I might work on this a little bit more. Uh, PNG file size, size more textures. Then we just hit export and that will export them for us. So hope you enjoyed that. Um, feel free to play with it, change the color of your oil barrels, uh, maybe create your own alphas and see what you can come up with. Uh, do a pristine version, do a battered and bruised version, uh, come up with your own logos, just to play with it and see what you can do. But hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. And I will see you next time for the next tutorial. So thank you very much, guys.